Hello, this is Matt Leonard on behalf of the Foundry. In this video, we're looking at a new feature of Nucate, Edit Geo. Now, the Edit Geo node allows you to modify the vertices or faces of native Nuke geometry or any geometry that's read in through the Read Geo node. So that would include obviously things like OBJ, FBX, and a Limbic. And this can be incredibly useful if you have a 3D model that you don't want to send back to the 3D department just to make a few changes. So let's say that this Hermosa Beach sign here, we want to just skew it a little bit more and maybe make a slight change to the pole itself. Well, luckily, this entire image is a 3D render, lit and textured entirely in Nuke. So I'm going to press V on the keyboard just to move across to the 3D view. I'm going to select my Hermosa Beach sign, which I can see is down here, and then press F in the viewer just to frame in. Now I've got this selected, I'm going to move into this area of my tree as well. So in my script, I'm just going to press J for jump. I'm going to come in and I'm going to type S for sign. Once it comes up, I can select it and I'm immediately now jumping to that backdrop node. And all backdrop nodes, as you make them in Nuke, automatically get given bookmarks. That makes it really easy to then move around the script. So I'm just going to get rid of this old Edit Geo node and we'll make a new fresh one. And we're going to do that by coming to 3D, Modify and Edit Geo. Now let's begin by having a look at editing some of the vertices. So I'm going to come into our selection node section here and choose vertex selection. I can also see that some of the vertices are hidden from me because of this front face. So I'm going to put on the occlusion testing section and now we can see all of the CVs through our object. Now obviously our palm tree in the background is causing a bit of problem mainly because it's covering some of the areas that I'm going to want to select. So I'm just going to, with the Edit Geo node selected, press 1 on the keyboard just to move the viewer to it so we can see this part of the 3D geometry on its own. So from here, I simply now just drag and select the control vertices or vertexes that I require. Also, I can zoom in just so I get a better view. I don't want to go too fast or we'll end up going through our front clipping plane. But I'm pretty happy with that. And what you can see is that we now have our little move tool here that we can begin to adjust these. And as I move these around, you can see we're actually able to move all of those vertexes. Now, if for some reason I didn't want all of these selected, I can hold down Alt and Shift and then drag and deselect some of them. So I could say I don't want these ones and maybe I don't want this one either. And now you can see as I move, those are just left behind, as you would expect. So I'm just going to do Control Z just to undo. Now we can also do this to faces. So I could come in and I could say I want face selection. And again, I can begin to select different areas of my model that I want to use as my face selections. And once I choose the one I want, I can then come in and specifically adjust that to wherever I want. Now what's interesting is as we have different things selected, basically our little move tool here averages between what we've got selected. So let's come back to vertexes and use that. So you can see if I select these, it averages onto these. And if I include these, it then averages between the two. Now, if we find, for instance, we want to do a rotation, but we don't want to rotate from the middle, we can actually adjust our position by holding down the Control or Command plus Alt key, and then I can actually move this around. And it actually moves around on the surface with the orientation set to the nearest face normal. So you can see as I move it, we're getting that really nice move, making sure that it's always facing the direction we want. So let's say we want to set it down to here. And then when I do my rotate, it's going to rotate directly around that point, which can be incredibly useful. So if I just go with the red, you can see that now rotating around that position. So again, I'm just going to undo that. Now, on top of all this, we're able to come in and actually animate this. So let's zoom back and say that we actually want to animate our sign moving slightly. So I'm going to grab these ones, hold down Shift and grab these. I'm going to come into maybe frame 10 and I'm just going to select a keyframe here. So I'm going to set a keyframe. 
Let's move to frame 30 and now just move this. Also, let's go wild and rotate it a little bit. And now you can see it's automatically set my second keyframe for me. And as I move back and forth now, you can see that animation taking place. So incredibly powerful what we can do with this tool. Now at the moment, our axis is aligned to our object. So again, if we come in and just grab these, zoom on in a little bit so we can see them in a little bit more detail. We can also come in and adjust our axis alignment, not to the object, but to the average normal. You can see when I do that, we then get a complete change in orientation and position of our axis. And this again can be very useful if you want to make changes on the axis around the average normal as opposed to the object. Depends really what you're doing and therefore you're going to want to switch back and forth between this as you go. Now on top of all this we also have the ability to just to transform the object. So if I come into my transform having just scaled back a little bit here. So if I come in here and make a change you can see overall we're able to make an adjustment on the overall shape. We can also rotate it and you can see that's taking place and it's actually rotating around its own axis which is kind of over here somewhere and we could also scale it if we wanted to and again it's scaling back to its axis which is kind of off center now if I obviously didn't want that to take place I could come in and change my pivot point or axis directly here but just for this example it's fine doing what it's doing so come back to here again, we can finally come in and reset our geometry if we find we've made any mistake. So I can just press reset and you can see my animation keys have now disappeared and our geometry is back to its original shape before I made any changes. So that's the new Edit Geo tool. It's incredibly powerful and enables you to do things that normally you wouldn't be able to do in a compositing program and would have to then send the model back to 3D. But with this tool, we can now make quite complicated changes extremely easily. And on top of being able to make the changes, we can even animate them. That again, gives us great flexibility in our modeling and general compositing. So thank you for watching this video. Again, my name is Matt Leonard and I'm pleased to have recorded this on behalf of the Foundry.